Welcome back to Talk Pittsburgh. A recent report listed Pittsburgh as one of the worst areas in terms of air quality in the U.S., but a local company is working to improve this through their line of products. Joining me now is the CEO of AirViz, Ian Magazine, and we have Mary here joining as well. We're going to get to that in just a minute, but first, uh, I want to talk to you, Ian, about your company. Air pollution, obviously a huge problem. It affects so many people, whether we know it or not. Tell us more about the impact of this on our health and on the economy. Yeah, um, people forget how important air is. I mean, hold your breath for 30 seconds. Right. <laughs> and yeah, and th that'll just speak volumes. Right, yeah. and we inhale trillions of particles a day, inhaling trillions of particles a day, uh, breathing in uh, pollutants that go right into our bloodstream. Right. And, and um, I'm so what did you, you started AirViz and tell me tell me what it is. What does AirViz do? Yeah, so Air, Air oh boy, sorry, AirViz is uh, it's a CMU spin-off and we're working to develop air quality monitoring technology. Uh, most people don't realize that most air pollution does not um, sorry. It's okay. No, I know. It's, it's a lot with us. It's a big, it's a big studio. Mary, uh, yeah. you guys get the air quality alerts. We do. And I know that we were just talking about how the threshold has actually Low. gone down, lowered. Yeah. But why is this so important? Because you now will put these out to the viewer so they know when the air quality has changed. It is so often that we have code orange days. And when you have those temperature inversions, I mean, one thing, too, that the National Weather Service is trying to do is to try to get ahead of them so we know days in advance when we're going to be issuing, you know, air quality alerts or code orange days because they do that. But we want to be able to say, hey, if you're in one of those and sense like if you're in a sensitive group, you want to avoid being outdoors. And it's that Liberty and Claritin area. That's that such the problem yeah. area. And even you go back, this has been going on for so many years. So it's so important what you're doing too with having a program like this and just trying to figure out, you know, what ways to tackle this. And yeah, so talk, talk yeah, more so about most that. pollutants don't get detected at all. 79% of the counties in the U.S. do not have a single air quality monitoring wow. at all. And those that do have limited coverage. The closest air monitor to my house is 32 miles. And that's a, that's a huge, I mean, that's we're talking about your house being multiple neighborhoods away from where that is. And, where, and wherever this com, comes in is, is we detect particles that are 10 times smaller than, than what is being detected at the national average. So what do people at home need to know? I mean, we can't stop breathing the air that we're breathing. Um, and I know that there are things being done on broader scopes, but what can we do at home? What, what should we know about this? So if you can't monitor it, you can't fix it. And, right. that's, and that's where we all come out. It's all about awareness, and it, it can't be at the national level. It has to be uh, at a grassroots level. Yeah, I mean, someone actually posed this question to me about, um, you know, sometimes we'll see companies fined for putting out too much emissions or that sort of thing. Does that need to go back into fixing this problem? And, and how do we get to the root of all of this? It, it, it does. You know, at the hyper local level, especially kids are, are the most vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, because there are faster breathing rates, uh, they're developing organs uh, and their blood blood their blood brain barrier. Yeah. Mary, you were talking about one of the other issues that comes in, and this is something that we don't have control over, but like the air inversions, yeah. the, the temperature inversions that we see. Yeah. How does that play I mean, into all of this? You have a cap on the atmosphere. Like there's high pressure in place, and it's a beautiful day, so you want to go out and enjoy it. And then you get an air quality alert in your area because all of those pollutants are being trapped because you have that layer of warm air above. So that's too where if you don't have those monitors around in certain locations, which I do hear that they're supposed to be getting more in places, but it's still not enough in my opinion. I think they need more everywhere. And then we need to, as you know, meteorologists, we are trying, even working with the National Weather Service, trying to get ahead of these so that we can see on a beautiful day, you know, especially that Liberty Claritin area. I mean, if you live there, you're used to it, right? right. But you still wanna make sure that you're being on top of it and trying to inform everyone right. on even though it's beautiful outside. Here's what you need to know. This is what yes. you can't see. Right. This is what you can't see, yeah. Um, Ian, can you give us some ideas of what schools can be doing? Because I know that there was a, a big push about not having buses idle. And, and so that's been implemented. But are there other things in particular when it comes to our kids and asthma rates going up and that sort of thing? Yeah, no, and, and let's, let's talk about asthma. One in 12 people suffer from asthma, causing 10 million doctor visits a year and right. over 
28 million missed school and work days a year. Wow. So schools could actually move bus stops uh, to safer locations, uh, optimize their bus routes, they could, um, they could replace old buses and enforce these no idling zones. That's great. A lot of work is being done. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us a little bit about this. I, you know, I think it's so important because we don't see it, so we need to talk about it. Exactly. Thank you, Ian, Mary, for joining in, too. Coming up on Talk Pittsburgh, a unique tradition continues in a Beaver County neighborhood, how turtle racing got its start and brings the community together. We'll be right back.